and welcome to Community Conversation, the show that's for and about the people who live in Reading. My name is Kevin Vett, and I'm going to be your host for this episode. We have in studio today Ruth Urell and Andrea Fiorillo from the Reading Public Library. But first, we have Board of Selectmen member Barry Berman. Let's look at that now. Well, hello. I am here with Barry Berman, who's a member of the Reading Board of Selectmen. And in fact, you're one of the newest members of the Reading Board of I Selectmen. I am the newest member. The newest. Reading. You were just elected last April. Yeah, April. How is your first six, seven months gone? It's, it's great. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's a busy time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, th there's a lot of stuff that happens sure. sort of in between the meetings. Yeah, okay. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of issues that we've been working on, a lot of things coming up, a lot, yeah. of, a lot of accomplishments. Um, you know, town government, it, 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 goes, it's, it, it goes slowly day by day. Right. No, you know, no major, uh, no, no major things. It's just, it's just keeping it on track is sure. Uh, sure. a lot of hardworking well, people. Let's so. talk about some, some of what's been going on around uh, town. Obviously, there are things that people are concerned about. Right. Um, and economic development always seems to be kind of top of that list. Right. Uh, what's going on in terms of economic development in town right now? Well, as, you know, as, as folks probably know, um, the, city's been, the town's been working um, with M MAPC to um, come up with sort of a strategy to develop some of, you know, three or four sort of the last economic development sites. And, and they've been coming to town probably not for like the last year. And they're actually October 7th, I believe, they're coming back to sort of make some general recommendations about right. some development sites and opportunities, which is a really important piece for us. Sure. Um, you know, this is sort of the last chance we have, you know, for any kind of major economic development projects. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, we need to get it right. As you know, um, you know, it's uh, the tax base is mostly homeowners right. here. Um, if we're going to if we're going to have any significant growth, it's going to be with sort of a planned, um, you know, economic development strategy that does mm -hmm. mixed use, that brings in some commercial, not right. just housing. Right. Um, also, senior housing is an important piece given sure. the aging demographic in the town of Reading as well. So um, that's something that the town, uh, the planning department, town is working on. The selectmen, mm -hmm. a lot of folks involved yeah. with that. And October seventh, they're coming um, to um, to sort of give us some final. Recommendations, and then we kind of go from there. Sure. Um, you know, to grow the tax base is, you know, there's, there's basically there's two <laughs> there's two ways to raise money in town. Right. You know, you can go back to the taxpayers, or you can just grow the economy. Right. And we have to sort of there's only two levers, and and we have to right. figure out the best right. way to. And certainly, to do there that. has been some success in that arena in the last several years with the Haven Street development. Yep. And uh, and other things going yeah. on. It's good to see the site of the former tuck shop finally getting built uh, after exactly. a long haul. And I, I know that's that's been there's yeah. been a lot of things that have happened right. with that. Um, but it's good to see some of those things coming on. But as you said, there are still a couple properties left that yeah. really are, are underdeveloped. At yeah, this point. and there's and you mentioned Haven Street. I think it's a great it's sort of a great example of kind of a smart. Mm -hmm. development in that you know the, the, the town meeting designated that as a 40R which is a mixed use development which right. would have housing and and businesses and 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 most people very few people could argue that that's not been a successful project yeah. Yeah. and one of the things that we're looking at is sort of creating another one of those 40R districts that kind of wraps around the other side okay. across from the depot to try to spur that type of mixed sure. use development i mean when you have people living downtown it creates those uh, the demand for those ancillary businesses right. and it becomes very walkable sure. you know with the depot as sort of the main uh, right. as the main you know as sort of the main hub of that um, so trying to get that type of zoning done right um, you're talking about the prospect uh, street property is that what you're talking about in terms of no that, or, that the, the, around sort of the opposite side you oh know, the opposite sort of create okay. that okay. create another 40 yard district okay, so I that see. Um, you know at some point you know, developer might come and look at that and say, "Well, that's another piece," and then right. that kind of wraps around from okay, it wraps where, around. Okay, where Haven see. Street. I mean, the, prospe uh, the um, prospect. The prospect. What I understand is primarily an apartment building. Yeah, that so that's a four, that's that. a forty B. Right. Um, the state actually, uh, Mass Housing, just basically designated, you know, approved that. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be um, all apartments. Right. Um, okay. It's part of the forty B, because Reading does not have its ten percent allocation of affordable sure. housing. Um, the, you know, the good news about that, if there is good news, is that Mass Housing in the letter to the town basically directed the developer to really work with the town good. on things like public safety issues. So it has yeah. to go to the ZBA. Yeah. I mean, it's a done deal in terms of the type of project it's going to be. Sure. We can maybe shape density. We can maybe shape parking design. Um, but it, it is going to be apartments. But that will at least be, as you said, some residents in the downtown area right. just to continue to fuel those downtown right. businesses. Right. And with, it's just a question customers. of kind of making sure that we do the best that we can so it doesn't impinge right. on 
the folks that are already sure, there. Sure, absolutely, so, absolutely. Uh, but a 40B, you know, they don't have to come to the town and ask permission as, right. as much. So, right. um, but we'll, we're going to shape it as much as and we can. And hopefully they'll so. heed by the direction from the Mass Department of Housing to work with the town. To work with us and possible. satisfy us as sure. opposed to just sort of do a pro forma. Right. Oh, I know there are a few other properties. I know when I mentioned the tuck shop. Uh, the, right. uh, across the street from the former tuck shop, there's an empty lot there that right. could be developed. There are that a few other little That whole South places. Main Street corridor is part, is one of the districts that um, okay. the MAPC is looking at to sort of create that kind mm -hmm. of, that kind of mixed use as well. So. Um, but yeah, that's an important that's an important piece of, of what, we're, what sure, we're trying to do. Sure, sure. And I think you know, as you said, there are only a couple ways to raise money, and if that's one of them, then we really need to look at right. that seriously. And to do it smart. And to do yeah, it well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and I think smart. I think that so. as we said, the Haven Street property is a model for that. That we can do it if we do it. Think about it and do it well, and and really put right. our, our when minds the and hearts it, to it. What's really coming? What's really interesting is that when the town has control over it, and when we're thoughtful, mm -hmm. good things happen. Yeah. When it's imposed from the outside, and we're playing defense it's tougher to get those positive outcomes. Right. So here it is, you know, we're being proactive and trying to you know, bring in, bring in um, you know, smart people right. to come help us think through. Uh, you know, our planning department was two people. It's now one. We're trying to hire another planner. Right. You know, so <laughs> Jesse Wilson has left. So really, it's, it, it, you know, we have to rely on outside capacity to help. But even what's happened on the other side of Haven Street, up by Haven and Maine, you know, mm -hmm. on the property that's Same there, thing, and yeah. it's been redeveloped yeah. and, and reworked, mm -hmm. and there are businesses moving in, and uh, and I think, but the town had a lot to, to work with on that, exactly. too, but maintaining the historic facade of the building while modernizing yep. at the same time. And that looks great. It, it looks yeah. excellent, yeah, yeah, absolutely does. And you walk down there, there's people out there at night. And yes, there are. And it's it's, it, it's kind of fun. Well, Reading so. is becoming an, an evening hub for people, you know, yeah. in some ways. If people come to Reading to, to enjoy our dinner. Our sleepy little town, I know. Our sleepy then, little town. We have to make sure that, you know, we, we sort of maintain the you know, the lifestyle that people, you know, Absolutely. That people want. So. Well, I know another thing that uh, the, the uh, Board of Selectmen deals with is, is with employees of the mm -hmm. town and that kind of thing. And there was a major employee announcement not yes. recently, and that is uh, not too long ago, and that is that the uh, chief of police is leaving yes. and uh, retiring. And so what, what is going to happen in terms of replacing the chief? Uh, actually, I think within, I think at the end of this week, resumes are due. Um, okay. And there'll, there'll, be a, there'll be a committee that looks at those. Um, you know, uh, I just have to say one thing. Chief Cormier has been an amazing chief. Um, he's done a, a tremendous job. It's a huge loss. Excited for him for the next opportunity. Right. Um, so, but for us as a town, you know, this is the kind of job you want to just want to fill like maybe once every 15 years. Right. <laughs> so we want to get it right. So you know, I, I know that there's some uh, been interest, some internal candidates okay. and, and and also external candidates. Good. Good. We're going to look at trying to hire the best person. I mm -hmm. think the chief is leaving the end of the year. Yeah. Uh, so we're working on that now. Um, you know, uh, myself, I'll be part of that group that that looks at that, okay, and, and ultimately, it's the it's the town manager that will make the appointment with right. the approval of the board of selectmen. Right. So, um, you know, can't say enough about Chief Cormier and the work that the Reading Police Department does. You know, in the wake of all the craziness that you hear outside in other communities, sure. with with um, you know with problems with the police department, um, we're very proud. Of the work that our police right. department does, and under the under Chief Cormier's leadership, so um, we're hoping to to fill those shoes. And um, but you know, obviously Chief Cormier is the the highest profile mm -hmm. one. Um, and, and what a lot of folks probably don't know right now is that um, we have on the town side, not even on the school side, but on the town side, 20 unfilled positions. Wow. Um, it's really we're at a, we're in a really difficult period to sort of hire. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that folks should know about town employees in Reading, oftentimes in the departments, a lot of those people are doing the work of two or three people. Mm -hmm. So when there's a vacancy and we say, well, this is the job description, people from the outside look at that and say, well, it's too much. Yeah. Are you sure that's only one job description? <laughs> you know, so we really ask a lot uh, yeah. of our town employees. It does do speak to the, to the dedication and commitment of our it's town It's the employees. dedication and the commitment. And, and then the other piece, too, people should know about is that, um, you know, on the, on the pay cycle, Reading is you know, sort of middle to maybe below the middle in terms of what, what we're paying mm -hmm. people. So, you know, we're asking people to do more and paying them less. Right. Um, and that's something that we we're really need to look at in terms of, you know, kind of uh, if we want to really get right. dedicated, hardworking people in here that stay. Yeah. Um, that, um, you know, we really need to look at those things. So, so what kind of options uh, have you been thinking about or exploring about uh, rectifying that situation? Well, one of the things that we're looking at in terms of just, you know, maybe some separating some of the job descriptions and, and maybe okay. what it means to do, we need to hire more people, mm -hmm. you know, to do, to do those roles. So, um, and then also looking at, you know, pay in class. Right. You know, are, are we going to, you know, be able, you know, to kind of, be, are we going to be able to hire the best people and keep the best people right. in the town? So. Right. 
um, you know, so we're looking at, you know, we're looking at those things. So that's, that's a pretty hard uh, yeah. thing. You know, right now, service is seamless. A lot mm -hmm. of times folks don't know, but, you know, we've got a lot of people doing really the job of two and three people. Right. So. Right. Um, okay, well, we'll you hopefully keep us in tune with that and, and what's yeah. happening there. And, and of course, uh, as you said, it's some way all comes back to economic development. If right. the tax base were, were to grow a little bit, right. then possibly some of those salaries yeah. could be raised or, or pos new positions could be created right. To, right. or however it would work out to, to help fill some of those vacancies. Yeah, and, and then the other thing too, it's an ongoing, constant struggle to look at, you know, sort of look at the enterprise. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we have X amount of dollars to spend, are we doing it efficiently? And, and right. just a few things that, that uh, have been talked about in the paper recently. Um, the, um, uh, the, school, uh, the schools in the town have uh, come to an agreement in terms about how facilities are going to get oh, done. Yes, There's going to be a, yeah. a facilities director that will be supervised by both the um, uh, but superintendent the and the town manager. Yeah. That was solely in the school department right. realm before. You know, this is really more of a, a, a way to kind of you know, we're not saving money per se, but we're maybe work in doing it, making things more yeah. efficient. Yeah. Um, there's going to be some shared human resources between the schools mm -hmm. and the town. Again, not saving money, but making money we spend right. more efficient. Looking at some technology opportunities. So, you know, just really trying to sure. trying to squeeze the buffalo off the nickel, <laughs> trying to make that money go as far as we can. Absolutely. Because at some point, if we do have to go to the voters and ask for more money. Mm -hmm. um, then we want to be able to, you know, to answer the questions. Well, did you look at this opportunity right. to save? Did you look at this opportunity? And we want to be able to say yes. And yeah, and I think the other thing that the voters expect is that their money is used right. as efficiently as possible. Right. And so, if you do have to come to the voters and ask for more, you can say we've done the best we can with what we have. What we, exactly. And this is how we've done it, and be right. able to show examples of that. Right. And, and to make to make it work more more efficiently. Right. So, right. Um, so I mean, you know, that's an ongoing thing. Again, you know, not sexy. You know, not doesn't get a lot of uh, got a news, but it can it, it can go a long way. Right. So, well, uh, just a, as we close here, uh, you know, you've been on the board of selectmen six seven months here. Yeah. I, what's the number one thing you've learned? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think you know, really, the the most important thing is just listening. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as a you know, I've been involved in town government for a long time, but never in the role of a, of a selectman. And and so, you know, you'll get a phone call, you'll get emails from people about issues right. and I think what's really important is that people are heard and listened to. We may not we may not get to yes on all the things that you want to do but that you really need to pay attention when someone emails you a phone you, you know you return those calls yeah. and I think people are grateful for that. Sure. I mean it's it's a really it's really important to make to look at town government as a, as sort of serving our clients and uh -huh. you know um, if we can Get the answers to them right away. Mm -hmm. it may not be the answer that they want, but at least let them know that they're heard and that yep. and that their voice matters. Um, and so there's really no there's no there's no problem that's too small. Right. I mean, we're looking at these grand issues. Or, you know, how to get economic development. The library. We didn't talk about we that, but anybody that. Yeah. anybody drives by the yes. library, you see what a you know tremendous right. job they're doing there. Some of the big kind of big ticket things that you see in the paper. But really, what makes town government work? It's just you know making sure that. People's questions get answered. Their concerns right. get answered, and uh, and that's something that actually is taking it's taken some time. But I, I actually find that a rewarding mm -hmm. part of the job. You can't you can't fight the big battle, so you fight the right. little battles. Right. So. Almost an extension of what Tip O'Neill said: all politics is local. It's very For local. A selectman, sometimes all politics it comes down to one some, person who has an issue. <laughs> sometimes on the street, yeah. <laughs> that's so, right. And uh, so you know we're working on to, to make that. To, All right. you know, to make that run more Thank you for being too. here today, Barry. My pleasure. It was great. Um, you know, uh, if people have issues or concerns, you know, let us know. Sure. Uh, let, you know, Bob, Bob Lasher, our town manager, is doing a tremendous job. Um, you know, we're trying to we're trying to keep all the balls in the air. It's right. not exactly, right. you know, it's hard to do. It's a, we're all volunteers, and right. um, but um, you know, we're listening. All right. Great. Thank you very much. We'll Great. be back in one moment. You're watching Community Conversation on RCTV. The only thing you can really do at the end of the day is compare a guy to his contemporaries. Right. It's hard to compare Brady to Terry Bradshaw. The game was different in the 70s than it is now. They've won something like 15 or 16 more games than any other team in the NFL yep. in that span of time. Luck looks like an NFL quarterback. Um, I remember I called everyone I knew when they, when they uh, traded for Garnett. Um, that was just one of the most amazing things of my life. <laughs> if John Farrell could fix John Lester, then your pitching problem is partially solved. Kareem had that one unstoppable shot, the sky hook, and he milked it for 
what, 35,000 points or something like that. Just, again, versatility, Mr. Patriot. Yeah. If you needed something, he's going to get it done. I am to this show as Alec Baldwin is to SNL. So. <laughs> this is the infamous Jason Barrett that shoves uh, his glove yes. right into Alex Rodriguez's face. <laughs> Well, hello. I'm here with Andrea Fiorello and with Ruth Urell, and they're both from the Reading Public Library. Ruth, you are the director of the Reading Public Library, and Andrea, you are the... Reference and Adult Services Librarian. Reference and Adult Services Librarian. Thank you both for being here this afternoon. Thank you. So uh, a lot of people are asking questions about the library, and we're going to maybe deal with the, the building of the library at a different time. But one of the things I think that people uh, want to know and want to be aware of is, is, is the library still functioning, or how is the library still functioning? So maybe you can start off, Ruth, by giving us a little bit of information about what's happening at the library still, even during this time of, of construction. Yeah, I'd be happy to, Kevin. A lot's going on. Um, we have about 60% of our collection on the floor over at 80 Walker's Brook, okay. right by the grocery stores. People find it very convenient. Okay. All on one floor, easy in and easy out. And um, we have a full range of services going on. We have programs mm -hmm. happening both at the library and in other locations okay. for many other uh, town public departments sure. like the police station, community room, the Pleasant Street Center, and the schools have been so cooperative in um, letting us use their spaces for some mm -hmm. of our outreach activities. And um, we're open our usual schedule, which is uh, 63 hours a week, including okay. um, Sunday afternoons now that October is coming, uh. Uh, two to five on, on Sunday afternoons. And um, programs for all ages. So there's stuff going on for adults, teens, and children. And um, as I said, some of it's happening elsewhere. Sure. And some is actually happening in the little um, space that we have. So the important message is still a fully functioning town fully library. Fully functioning. Lots of research, lots of education going on, mm -hmm. lots of uh, children and adults learning. And yeah. um, computers are available for public use and uh, museum passes and um, downloadable content as well as um, sure, print. Sure, sure. No, I know, Andrea, you're here to talk specifically about one program that's happening that we wanted to highlight today, and that's the Live Wires program. Can you tell us a little bit about what Live Wires sure. is? Sure. So Live Wires is a lifelong learning um, series, especially geared towards older adults, those um, retirement age and beyond. Okay. It's open to everyone, All but right. that is sort of designed with the, that audience in mind. Sure. Uh, it's a chance for people to come together and connect uh, socially, but it's also a chance for people to continue to learn and explore their curiosity. Mm -hmm. It involves lectures and workshops and concerts and uh, all, all a variety of different programs meant to appeal to different people at different times. Sure. And these, these happen over over the entire fall or over a, a period of time. Thru it's throughout, not the throughout the year. And they've been going they've been going on I think since about two thousand six, two thousand seven. Okay. Uh, and we have a morning program that's usually more of a workshop format and an right. evening program that's usually more of a lecture format and they run on a monthly Basis. Okay. And what are some of the topics or, or things that are coming up in the next couple of months? Well, we're going to have a really popular um, presenter October 21st, Neil Swidey. I think it's October 20th, I take that back. Mm -hmm. October 20th, Tuesday evening, the third Tuesday evening of the month, is coming to talk about um, the tunnel accident that happened in Deer oh. Island in the 1990s. Okay, yeah. He's a Globe magazine reporter. Okay. And so he's going to come talk about his new book, Trapped Under the Sea, that's about that accident. Wow, interesting. And I think that will be very popular. And w right now we're doing memoir workshop. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll have a bird watching program in November. In okay. December we have a holiday crafts program. Okay. But the one that I really wanted to highlight today is one that's near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about aging itself and aging mm -hmm. in this community. We're going to be talking about the resources that are already in place for adults, but okay. also planning ahead because what's happening right now is a major demographic shift mm. throughout the country where 11,000 people turn 65 every day in wow. the U.S. And from the time of our grandparents, our life expectancy is about 30 years longer yeah. than, than people who were born just 70, 80 years ago wow. we're expected to live and each child born today is expected to live one year more on top of that. Mm. So we're, we're at this 
place where things are really shifting and I want to make sure that the community of Reading not only knows what great supports are here now, but starts thinking about what that's going to look like culturally okay. and how we make it better. And so we're working with several partners. We're, we're going to have the town of Reading's elder services come in. We're going to have Mystic Valley elder services mm -hmm. come in and talk about the programs they okay. have in place and all the supports transportation, help with um, sure. medical appointments, meals on wheels, social services. I'm going to present on all the things the library has to offer because the library really has a lot of resources for sure. all ages from um, neonatal all the way up to your homebound and right. so I'm going to be presenting on those services. We're going to have Jackie Carson who is the CEO of Peter Sanborn Place come in and talk okay. about her um, model of sort of a continuum of assisted living, mm -hmm. which is a, a forefront model in the U.S. So that's really exciting that that's happening yeah. here in Reading. It's a model that a lot of other communities are looking at at sure. Sanborn Place. So she's going to come in and talk about that. We have someone from the David K. Johnson Foundation coming in to talk about what it was like caring for a parent who was going through Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. and then the foundation that he and his brother. Um, put in place to help cure and support families who are going through the same thing. Mm. So um, this program will be for people who are looking to the future to plan ahead, but okay. also people who are now caregiving um, okay. parents sure. and older family and friends. And the final program, this is going to be a little mini-series, so there are three, okay. s three separate programs on consecutive Wednesday mornings, and the final program will be uh, a look at the village concept, which is sort of the, the newest trend in dealing with uh, aging in place okay. and how to pool resources and come together sure. and look at some other, some co-housing and some various models that our people are mm -hmm. just starting to sort of come up with to, to think about this right. aging demographic in a creative way. Yeah, and I really think it's important because I, I sometimes I think people are not aware of all of the services that the town already offers or that groups in the town already Absolutely. offer for people who are aging or you know have difficulty getting around, don't drive anymore, et cetera. And so I think it's a great thing to kind of pool it all together in mm -hmm. one place and, and bring in all the key players. Uh, what are the dates that, that that's happening? You said it's three so different it's, dates? It's, it's four, uh, three Wednesdays in a row and it's going to be held at the Unitarian Universalists Fellowship Hall. Okay. So that's new. We've never done a program sure. there before. So take note of that. And it starts October 21st okay. and the next one is the following October 28th okay. and the following November 4th. All right. So three Wednesdays in a row. Three Wednesdays and in a row. It's important that people understand that that is happening at the Fellowship Hall at the Unitarian Church on Woburn Street yes, thank and you. not at the library right. or, or another location. Right. I can see people driving all around all over right. the place and so trying each, to find it. And so each of those three series will have different content okay. and each of them will have an opportunity for people to sit down, have refreshments and talk not just listen to what the resource providers sure. already have in place, but talk about what they want to see, what, what their helpful. needs are. Yeah. The, the town has just done, um, they've just wrapped up an uh, elder services right. yeah, we survey had, we had where they're trying to that, find yeah. what people use currently and what they need, sure. as has the library. So we're going to come in with some sort of data to share about right. that, but we're also going to have this as an opportunity for people to say, well, these are the supports that I need to right. age in place, or I don't know how I'm going to pay for a nursing home, or sure. I don't know how I'm going to take care of my, Aging you know, my my, my parents with whatever. memory issues. Yeah. You know, all of there's just there's so many things to talk about. So right. we're going to and let someone people could, if they can't make the first Wednesday on the on the 21st, they could go on the just on the 28th, for instance. Absolutely, you can come to any one of them. I think you get the most of it when you come to all of them and really really see the whole picture sure but we welcome people to come to any part of it that's convenient excellent excellent so Ruth I wanted to ask you you had mentioned you know that the library is running a full slate of programs while yes. while uh, um, the transition is underway here and that kind of thing can you highlight one or two sure, uh, for to. us we just started um, our resumed our um, children's programs mm -hmm. so on um, Tuesday mornings and Wednesday mornings we have uh, programs for preschoolers at 80 General Way, which is kind of okay. nice, so um, sure. the books are right there where the right. where the children are, 
And um, this Saturday, we'll be launching our um, another season of our literary lunches. Oh, okay. um, it's for children in grades three through five. Mm -hmm. They can um, come at noon on Saturday, bring some books that they've enjoyed, or um, just show up. And um, people share what they're reading, and uh -huh. the librarians make recommendations as well. And the okay. recommendations from the kids and the librarians um, then become part of our um, staff recommendations on the website, on okay. the children's part okay, of the website. Very good. So um, that's going on. And um, just to mention that we always have museum passes and okay. um, passes to um, other activities. Sure. Many of them are um, sponsored by the Friends of the Library and they mm -hmm. provide discounted admissions. Okay. So there's a lot of information about that and um, it's a great way for people to save on sure. local activities sure. and um, some really fine things there. And we also have, um, um, we're providing some downloadable content for people. Okay. So um, not just sort of the come in and pick up some DVDs or some CDs, mm -hmm or some uh, books and magazines, but we also have things like Freegal, which is uh, f uh, free music downloads okay. that are legal and, <laughs> um, and free. And, um, and you get to keep them. Yes, and, and you can keep them in a certain number uh, per week that okay. you, you can access. And lots of online content that people can use remotely to do their research. And uh -huh. um, for example, uh, consumer reports we have okay. online. So somebody's looking at replacing a refrigerator or something. Sure. Um, so we are, as you say, fully functioning and um, kind of proud to say that we're up to within 90% of our normal circulation. That's excellent. Um, we're really um, borrowing a lot from other libraries and uh -huh. um, lending a lot to. Terrific. So if someone wanted to learn more about the library and any of the programs we've talked about today, uh, your website is what? www. Readingpl.org. Pl .org. So www.readingpl.org. Well, I thank Great. you, Ruth. I thank you, Andrea, for being thank here you. today Thanks, and Kevin. reminding us that the library is still <laughs> there and still functioning. And we look forward maybe in the future for you to come and uh, share a little bit about uh, the building project and what's happening Great. there. We thank you for watching us now. You've been watching Community Conversation on RCTV. We'll be back in just one moment. Thank you for watching this episode of Community Conversation, and thank you to Barry, Andrea, and Ruth for participating in this one. Be sure to look for our future episodes. Have a great day.